Hey, what's going on? This is Joel, and I'm here to give you the money code of the day. In today's topic, we're gonna go over how to remove hard inquiries from your credit profile. So if you're somebody that is relatively new, I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown on what the difference is between a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. One is going to negatively impact your credit score and the other one is not gonna do anything. So the hard inquiry, this is what's going to negatively impact your credit score. So what are the type of things that we do to accumulate hard inquiries? Well, number one is anytime you apply for a credit card, so you go online, you put in all your information, put in your address, you put in your social, and then you hit submit. What you're doing is you're allowing that institution, Capital One, Bank of America, whoever, to go ahead and do a hard pull, a hard inquiry, and see what's on your credit profile. So you're giving them full authorization to go ahead and do a deep dive on your credit report, before they go ahead and they give you this loan or this credit card or whatever it is that you're trying to apply for. Now, we want to minimize the amount of hard pulls that we get. If you have too many hard inquiries on your credit profile, that actually looks bad. That looks bad in the eyes of lenders and that can actually decrease your credit score. So we want to be mindful of that. Another common way of racking up hard inquiries is if you go to a car dealership. If you go to a car dealership, they're going to run your credit and they're going to shop you to multiple different lenders. And I'm not going to go and do a deep dive as far as why they do that. But trust me, it's not in your best interest. So it's very easy for you to go to a dealership. And if you don't specify for them to only run your uh, credit report with one lender, they're going to take your credit profile and they're going to go from lender to lender to lender to lender to lender and you're gonna have multiple hard inquiries on your credit profile by just going to one car dealership. That's usually like the most common way that I see people coming to me asking about how to remove hard inquiries. It's because they went to a car dealership and they came back home and then they checked their credit report and they saw 10, 12 different hard inquiries. But you can expect to lose five points off your credit report, five points off of your credit score for every hard inquiry that you have that's not attached to an open account. So every time you go to Bank of America, you go to Chase, you go to Amex, you go to the car dealership, and you try to get an account, and they do a hard inquiry, and you don't get the account, you're going to hurt your score. That's why it's very important before you apply anywhere that you have your credit reports and you know your scores. So that's a hard inquiry. A soft inquiry is when you go ahead and pull your own credit report. Or sometimes you may have noticed that you've gotten in the mail like a pre-approval letter for uh, a credit card or a loan. It'll literally say, hey, Joel, you've just been pre-approved for this such and such credit card. Just call in with this activation code and you're approved. The reason why they're able to give me a pre-approval letter is because they've already done a soft inquiry or a soft pull on my credit profile to kind of figure out that more than likely I would be able to qualify for this, this product, this loan, this credit card. Also, if you're a job seeker, you may notice that a potential employer may look at your credit profile, but it's going to be showing up as a soft inquiry, so that's not going to hurt your credit score. All right, so that's the difference between a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. So now if you're somebody that unfortunately accumulated a lot of hard inquiries, don't worry about it. There are still some things that we can do to actually get those hard inquiries off of your report. Now, how are we able to do that? Well, under FCRA guidelines, we are allowed as consumers to go to the major three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, and anything that they are reporting on our credit profile, they have to verify. Now, it's up to us for us to request that, but we are within our rights to ask Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax that anything that they are reporting, they need to verify, and if they cannot verify it, they must remove it. 
that goes for collections, that goes for charge-offs, that goes for any sort of derogatory item that's on your credit report, and that also goes for hard inquiries. Now, the old school way, the way that it was supposed to be done is when it comes to your personal information or when it comes to hard inquiries, the credit bureaus are supposed to go to the courthouse to verify information or go directly to the institution, the lender, the person that is claiming that they did the hard inquiry. That's how it's supposed to be done. But unfortunately, these credit bureaus, they're kind of lazy with how they do their verification. So if you think that when you send a dispute letter to the credit bureaus that a real live person is going through your letter with glasses on and with a highlighter marking up and checking, that's not happening. So instead of manually verifying all of the information, what the major three credit bureaus are going to do is they're going to go to another data furnisher, two actually, one of them is called LexisNexis, and the second one is called SageStream. And I'm going to have in the link below um, an easy way for you to be able to click. And we want to freeze our accounts with both of those companies, SageStream and LexisNexis. Again, why do we want to do that? When we send out our dispute to the major credit bureaus, what they're going to do is they're going to reach out to LexisNexis and they're gonna reach out to SageStream to try to verify that information just as like a shortcut. So now if we get to cut off all sorts of information or any information for that matter from SageStream and LexisNexis. So what happens when the major credit bureaus tries to verify that information, they're not gonna get anything because we froze SageStream and we froze LexisNexis. For LexisNexis, the process is incredibly easy. You just click the link below, you put in your basic information, and you select why you want to freeze, and then you submit, you'll be frozen, or you'll be able to opt out of LexisNexis. SageStream, they're gonna ask you for a little bit more information, and they're gonna require you to upload your ID, or if you don't have any ID, there are some secondary identification items that you can just upload. And what they're going to do is they're going to mail you a pin code so that in the future, when you are ready to unlock those accounts again, you can use that pin and you'll be good to go. The next step is we need to get you access to a letter called the 604 letter. And that's a letter that is specifically worded for the removal of hard inquiries. And once again, you don't need to go on Google, check the link below and you can get it for free. So what you're going to do once you have access to that 604 letter, you're going to download it from the link below. You're gonna open it in Microsoft Word and you're literally going to just copy and paste all of the hard inquiries that are on your credit report and you're going to put that into the Microsoft Word document and you're going to save that and you're going to print it out. Now, be very mindful. Do not, under any circumstance, use a wet ink signature on any document that you send to Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion. Just write your name in and then you're done. That's all you need to do. When it comes to disputes, when it comes to validation letters, anything that you're sending to these major bureaus does not need your wet handwritten signature. Do not do that. Also keep in mind that anytime we send anything to the credit bureaus, we want to send it out via USPS certified mail. We want to know exactly when they received it. We don't want to hear any excuses about it got lost in the mail. We don't know what happened to it. You always want to keep records of whenever you send something out, you want to know exactly when they received it, who received it, and you wanna keep that in your records. Pay for United States Postal Service certified mail. And finally, now that you have your letter, you sent it out USPS certified mail, I want you to keep track. They have 30 days to respond back to you when it comes to validating and verifying the information that is now under dispute and that you're asking to be removed. Now here's a bonus tip that I don't see in other people's videos. I want you to pay attention to CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. 
Now the CFPB is a free website that you can go to and I personally use that for myself and my clients. Anytime we're dealing with disputes and we feel like the process is not going as quickly or as effectively as we want it to be. What we tend to do is we go, let's say after 30 days, they're not giving you traction. Number one, you can go to small claims court and you can actually fight it that way. Or you can go to CFPB and you can actually fill out a very free and easy dispute that shows what it is that you are trying to dispute and with whom. And you're going to basically say that you are trying to go ahead and remove a hard inquiry. You have submitted the 604 letter to the credit bureaus. You're not getting a response or the information is not being removed. Using this website, it takes no more than five minutes max to just submit everything. And usually we're able to see within about a week from the submission that we get some sort of response back. So that right there is just a very simple trick. Go ahead and number one, get your credit reports, find out all of the hard inquiries. Number two, go to SageStream, go to LexisNexis, and make sure you opt out and you freeze your account with those two companies. Number three, go ahead and download that 604 letter. And you're going to take all of your information that has your hard inquiries and you're just going to copy them into this letter and you're going to print it out and you're going to send it via USPS certified mail. You're going to give it 30 days. You're going to track when you sent it out. And if after 30 days and give it, give it a little bit of extra time because I'm seeing here with COVID, everything tends to be a little bit slower now. But regardless, if after 30 days you're not able to get any traction, go to consumerfinance.gov, which is the CFPB website, and you can submit an additional dispute there. I will have all of the links to all of the aforementioned websites, so it's very easy for you to just access everything. And if you found this information to be valuable, if you think it's some good information being shared here, please like and subscribe. Please leave some comments down below and share it with your loved ones if you think it's going to be useful for them too. And I will check you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.